Avery Brown. Every 25 seconds, someone in the United States is arrested for drug possession. This is according to Betsy Pearl, an Associate Director of Criminal Justice Reform at American Progress and former policy advisor in the justice programs at the U.S. Department of Justice, published by American Progress in June of 2018. Everyone in this room knows that drugs can be harmful and addictive. For example, drugs such as tobacco, heroin, and cocaine are known for causing cancer. The Drug Enforcement Administration should decriminalize drug use. First, I will explain why drug why drug legalization, why drug criminalization is harmful to our society. And then I will explain why rehabilitation is preferable to incarceration. First, let us begin with why the criminalization of drugs in the United States is unsustainable. There are many reasons why individuals should not be penalized for drug use. The United States, the United States is incarceration system is not economically sustainable. The federal government spent $9.2 million daily to incarcerate people in the United States in 2015 alone, and the state government spent $7 billion for the same reason in the same year. Legalizing drugs would save money in averted enforcement costs and yield in tax revenue. Legalizing marijuana, for example, would bring in $13.3 billion annually. This tr these tremendous costs are due to an unprecedented amount of incarcerated people in the United States. According to Nicholas Turner, the President and Director of the Bureau Organization and Trustee for the Council on Criminal Justice and the Policy Academies in a publication for the Bureau Organization, a national organization that seeks to end mass incarceration in 2019, says that Despite containing 4% of the world's population, America holds 16% of those incarcerated in the world. One fifth of those who are incarcerated in the United States serve time for drug charges, or about 456,000 people. Despite these enormous statistics of, um, of people in the, in the incarceration system in the United States, incarceration does little to affect substance abuse rates. In fact, incarceration is linked to increased mortality from overdosing. In the first two weeks after release from prison, individuals are 13 times more likely to die than the general population, and with overdoses being the leading cause of death. According to Julian Allen, an accredited with a PhD and a professor at the Rural Health Research at Charles Sturt University in the Substance Treatment, Prevention, and Policing Journal in 2019 says that environmental factors in jails and prisons are, are leading causes for these relapse rates. Incarceration, those incarcerated are not the only ones who struggle though. Kyle Fritz, and according to Kyle Fritz, an associate an assistant professor in the Department of Public Policy of Leadership at the University of Mississippi, published in the American Journal of Bioethics in April of 2021, says that convicting, criminal, convicting people of drug charges puts people at home in a position to turn to crime and drugs themselves. These, these tremendous statistics are primarily due to racism and classism in the United States government. Drug convictions boomed under Nixon's war on drugs policies, which were based on racial and economic prejudice. He cut out his largest political obstacles, hippies and black Americans, by, by associating the groups with marijuana and heroin and criminalizing those drugs heavily. Today, black Americans are arrested at six times the rate of their white counterparts, and according to Cindy Brooks Dollar, an associate professor at the North Carolina University since 2014, and accredited with a PhD and published in Critical Criminology in 2019, economically challenged individuals are more likely to be arrested, prosecuted, and incarcerated. Now that I've talked about 
why criminal, criminalizing drugs is harmful to our society. I will talk about why rehabilitation is preferable. Systems of repair will better lead addicts to recovery. Drug courts, for example, sentence defendants to supportive services, substance, substance use treatment, and supervision instead of incarceration, and decrease recidivism or the likelihood of a criminal to reoffend from 53 to 40%, and after 14 years will, will reduce recidivism to 30%. Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion, or LEAD, is another program that shows that rehabilitation works in the real world. LEAD, according to Susan E. Collins, a licensed clinical psychologist and professor in the Department of Psychology at Washington State University, in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at the University of Washington, published in the Evaluation and Program Planning Journal in 2017, says that LEAD is a program that diverts individuals to case management and supportive services instead of incarceration. Through, these, through this LEAD program, after six months, people were 60% less likely to restivate, and after two years, 58 were, had 58% lower odds of arrest. This is because the LEAD program stops the cycle of incarceration that put and put people into the workforce, boosting, boosting their economic knowledge and finding housing and benefits and treatment for these people. First, I discussed why criminalizing drugs in the United States is not sustainable. Then I discussed why rehabilitation is preferable to incarceration. The Drug Enforcement Administration should decriminalize drug use. Every 25 seconds, someone in America is arrested for drug possession. During this speech, 12, at least 12 people have been arrested for drug possession. With billions spent on a perpetual system, it is clear that incarceration is not, op is not optimal. And instituting my solution of rehabilitation will help those 12 people to re-enter and prosper in a healthier society.